What's up, StarCraft fans? Last time we did Rainer level 1. Now we're gonna do Kerrigan level 1. Of course, no prestige, no levels, no masteries, just Kerrigan. And I understand that Kerrigan is so weak, it is hard to not get carried as level 1 Kerrigan, even with any ally. So I have decided instead to do a solo um, on one of the uh, Maguro maps. So let's check that out. Thank you to Legendary Sinner who is supporting me the a mobilization wave tier. And Darth and Shadow Archon who are supporting me the Pulse Cannon tier. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. So this is part and parcel, where we have to uh, destroy boxes and collect parts to activate the Balius, and then the Balius will open the box of the hybrid, and then we'll have to take care of the hybrid because the Balius is a glorified box opener. Okay, so um, I have decided to go with yeah, playing this off. Uh, playing this without recording, and then recording from the replay instead, so I can focus on what to talk about and not have to, not have to think about how to play. So, the idea here is to get really greedy as Kerrigan. Your hero is strong enough to sustain your game for the first few minutes, so while you are powering up your economy, you will just use Kerrigan to take care of most of the early game. And that is usually enough. On some maps, like Rift to Core Hall, uh, you will need really early game defenses. Because, on brutal difficulty at least, the first wave of Rift to Core Hall hits at 2 minutes. So you will need something for the first wave on that map. Uh, yeah, if you're at uh, normal difficulty or lower, the first wave hits earlier. But, yeah, as it stands, this is a map where you can't actually go greedy. You can see I've gone for a, a hatchery first at like 15 supply. And I'm just spamming down the worker button. So a lot of players think that you need to be a fast player to play well in co-op. That's simply not the case. All I'm doing here to make workers fast is holding down the drone button as Kerrigan. It's, it's as simple as select the hatchery, select the hotkey for select the hotkey for select larva, and then just hold down the drone button. I'm not pressing fast. I just have it pressed down, and I'm not even thinking about it. It's that simple. You just have to hold down the drone button, and that'll do it. That'll do a lot of the work for you. That's called, yeah, that's called Zerg APM, where a lot of your APM comes from just holding down the button, and then you just spam out. So now I make the spawning pool at 20 supply, as I like doing even at mastery level Kerrigan, and then I'll need to saturate the gases because. All of Kerrigan's good units are gas intensive. So for Kerrigan, you can go for Hydralisks, Ultralisks, Mutalisks, even at level 1. The thing is that uh, Hydralisks are the basic units. They, they're kind of like Marines except more expensive. And uh, they cost gas. The, the, uh, the thing about being Marines is while you have a lot of firepower, you're also extremely susceptible to splash damage. So what you want to do as Kerrigan is snipe the splash damage if you can. If you can't, you're kind of screwed. But you're level 1, so you'll be screwed either way. But to be less screwed, you need to be on point about sniping all of the splash damage that the enemy throws at you. For example, against Zerg, this map, against Zerg, you will need to snipe off the Vipers, Vesters, Balance if you can, hybrids, uh, the hybrid uh, dominator, the big green one. Against Protoss, you want to snipe out the disruptors, the reavers, and the high templar. Against Tehran, you want to snipe the widow mines, siege tanks, and if you are playing mutalisks, you want to snipe the thors also. Oh, also science vessels and ravens. So how you snipe them is you you, you run Kerrigan in. Attack the enemy unit that you want to snipe, like for example the siege tank, and then use your ability to hop back to save Kerrigan. So another thing you want to do as Kerrigan is spam out the assimilation aura, because that'll allow you to get a lot of resources early. At level 8, Kerrigan gets one of our most important upgrades, the Omega Worm. The Omega Worm allows Kerrigan, some would say, incredible mobility. But at this point, with Omega Orbs, I wouldn't call it mobility, I would call it uh, quasi-omnipresence. Because you could 
basically teleport your army anywhere you want to, as long as you have the worms for it. But only quasi, because if you don't have the charges for it, then you're not omnipresent. So it's quasi omnipresence. Uh, because, yeah, the, the, the worms are cooldown based, so you can just pop them anywhere you want. Uh, a big note here. As soon as the evolution chamber completed, I started the Hellrock for it too. You can see it's already blacked out here, which means I already researched it. Even at level 1, you will want the Heroic Fortitude on Kerrigan, so she lasts longer. And without Prestigious, and at level 1, you just want to use Kerrigan uh, a re very, very aggressively at the beginning. Because, like I said, you're still wrapping up your army. And at, at, right now, at 3-5 minutes, I don't have any army to speak of. I chose not to make any queens, and instead going for a hatchery. The reason behind that is the hatchery doubles ours as larva production and as extra supply. And even though it costs 300 minerals, I think the benefit of having the macro hatchery built already is uh, frees up, especially if you're, you're a lower level player, it frees up valuable attention span for you to still get the extra larvae while still focusing on Kerrigan. In 1v1, it's important to be on point with your transfusions because that's what you're given. But in co-op, you have this hero that called Kerrigan, and she is very strong. So the way you get more of an advantage in a game like StarCraft 2 is by making sure that you're using your biggest advantages. Now, having extra larvae is a big advantage, but having Kerrigan is a bigger advantage. That is why, in co-op, if you have to choose between getting Queen's Transfuse and getting Kerrigan and being aggressive with her, the correct choice is usually, but not all the time, usually to micro Kerrigan. That's why I'm choosing to be more aggressive with Kerrigan and to get more larvae that I need, I just built the extra hatchery to get that larva for my production. And also I get an extra supply so that instead of being supply blocked right now, I get the uh, supply to 44. And again, this assimilation aura is very important for Kerrigan, even at level 1, to get as much army as you, as you can. So whenever this is off cooldown, you have to make a conscious effort to use the assimilation aura whenever you can, so that you can continuously generate money off of the enemy. And, uh, well, whenever you can, with a caveat, whenever you can and when you are near a group of enemies like this that you can easily take out with Kerrigan, and uh, if it is available, once it becomes available, just run toward nearest enemy clump you see that you know you can take away Kerrigan and just spam her abilities. So right now, I just, yeah, just zap through here. So, uh, so check out what I did here. I went through them the first time, but I realized that I could get more damage if I walked to this spot. Instead of just using the, uh, the psionic shift to swipe back, I thought I would get all of these units if I walked to this spot, this spot behind the, the Hydralisk, and then just use, use Psionic Shift to run to this location to damage all of them. And that did indeed get us more damage. And you can see, you can see, how, you can see now how this mechanic works. On their own, these three Hydralisks with only the, uh, the attack speed upgrade are pretty garbage, but they are, even in 1v1, glass cannons. So if you have a unit that tanks for them, and that just allows them free reign to shoot, they can be pretty effective. And lo and behold, there is this huge tank here, like physically huge. Like look, Kerrigan is bigger than the Hydralisk. Like uh, lore-wise, Hydralisks are huge, like 2 meters tall, and Kerrigan is taller than them for some reason. Uh, let's, call this, let's just call that Zerg magic. But you have this huge tank here called Kerrigan, who can just absorb all these enemy hits. And look, there's notice there's a little there's a little green bar here and a 19 out of 200 on Kerrigan's uh, health bar above the yellow 816 out of 1000. That is your uh mutating carapace. Whenever Kerrigan does damage to enemy forces, she absorbs that damage as mutating carapace and basically gets her shields. So it is actually there's actually no downside to, to attacking as Kerrigan because even the damage she deals will give her more health for you to work with. So, you just keep using Kerrigan whenever you can, really. And you notice that I on this map, I went for the expansion first. 
The expansion is very important as carrier, like I said, because you need uh you need gas for your best units. Well, that's why I took this expansion so I can get the gas. These gases are what I will need to make more of these better units. And uh, speaking of better units, I chose to make hydrolysis this game because they have more general purpose. If you don't know what end composition you're facing, and even if you do, if you don't feel like uh, microing heavily, you can always just go for a hydrolysis, even at level 1. Because honestly, you don't have a lot of choices carrying at level 1. Zerglings don't really get their, uh, their raptor strain yet, and they only have the speed and the, uh, they're basically 1v1 Zerglings, which are good if you have 4 or so bases, but you're gonna be stuck on 2 bases in co-op, so Hydrolisks are the better option, because Zerglings and Kerrigan will kind of overlap in the rule. They're in front tanking, and they're, they're melee, they're basically close range units. The Hydrolisks provide a different dynamic to Kerrigan. Instead of Kerrigan attacking alongside an army, Kerrigan and her army serve different purposes in the fights. Kerrigan is in front tanking damage as well as uh, taking out splash damage of the enemy, whereas the Hydrolisks at the rear uh, clean up the rest in safety behind their queen. So, I continue to clear out, the, by the way, in part parcel, you do want to clear out this big area first because this area has lots of parts that you want to collect. So, if you check out the minimap, the main two areas where, where you want to collect uh, parts in the first phase is this expansion area over here. Uh, there's an expansion over here and another expansion just to the north of that. You want to collect all the parts here in this area, and after you clear this area, you run to the far west side, past this, past this little ramp thing, and there is another group of parts here that I will show you later. But generally, these two areas are enough to get you the parts that you need for the first Belias. So you can see, once again, I walk, I walked Kerrigan here to a line where, yeah, basically, I'm basically lining Kerrigan up to to swipe at all of them, and. It, as you can see, I took out like a few Zergus here and then I'm damaging all these three Hydralisks. That's a lot of damage and will allow the rest of my own Hydralisks to finish these off. And you can see this guy already has three kills, one kill, three kills. So these Hydras are very cost effective because I have not lost any of them, but they are getting me kills. That is very effective. And whenever you can, of course, you just micro back a hurt Hydralisk. Right now, I'm not doing much. So I just I just micro back this, this Hydralisk. Of course, I can get like, um, yeah, I can macro better. 350 is not zero, so I can still macro better. But still, uh, there is benefit to pre preserving this hydralisk and having it available for a later fight. I just take out this space, send my army forward, clear out the rest of these things. By the way, I have an overseer over here. At level eight, your detector will be the omega worms. Omega worms are just better detectors because they are ground based, meaning. They cannot be shot down by anti-air. Look, I'm running a, I'm running a, uh, a hydrolysis carbon here. With this singular overdude here, if I fly over a spore crawler or a missile turret, this, uh, this overlord's dead. Meanwhile, mean, whereas if you have an omega worm, you can just pop your omega worm right here, and uh, it'll take damage, but it has 2,000 health. But most importantly, it won't get focused down by all the enemy's anti-air. Let's walk back. I can notice that the. Uh, Red dot of the attack wave is heading toward this base of my ally, so I'm just running, running down, trying to intercept that. So you can see, as soon as I have assimilation aura and I'm nearby a big force of enemy units, I just activate assimilation aura away. As as should you, you should just use assimilation aura whenever you can, and it's whenever it's advantageous. You don't have to save it for long, but uh, whenever you see, whenever you counter one fight, just the first fight, you can with a reasonable chunk of enemy units, just pop the uh, assimilation all right away. It's better to use it than to not use it. As I, as the same thing with Raiders top bars, if you don't use it, you lose it in co-op. So yeah, just wipe, look at how much, and look at how many enemies I took using just the, uh, the swipey thing. The psionic shift. Now, yeah, Kerrigan is absor absorbing the brunt of the hit so that these hives, again, still have free reign. One kill, six kills. This one hydrolysis has six kills. That you, you don't normally see that. This, this guy has seven kills. You don't normally see that in one v one, even with the best players. But with Kerrigan, you routinely see, yeah, this these kill counts because Kerrigan is absorbing all the hits. 
the character herself is one of six skills, which is even more insane. Anyway, we continue smashing through here. You can see that this overlord is already taking hits. Because it is the lone fly unit in your whole army. But you can still, yeah, just uh plow through with these as long as you have Kerrigan in front absorbing the hits. Also, you notice that I have the Overlord in a separate control group. Speaking of control groups, so I have uh, a few control groups as a low-level Kerrigan. Without Omega Worms, you will lose a control group, so I put the Overlord in there. My control groups are, number one, the hatchery, the hatcheries and the hive. So that whenever I need to produce more units, I just press the hotkey to recall all these hatcheries and then select larva and then I'll produce all of, out of all of them. Just hold down the key for the just hold down the key for the other one. For example, if I want to spend all this money on hydrolisk, I just hold down the hydrolisk key. It'll just spam all the hydrolisk. That is certainly much faster than having to click here, select larva, and then manually click. Hotkeys are just better, guys. If you don't use hotkeys, I think, I really think the game would go much easier for you if you took, if you took like a couple of, couple of days to just practice using hotkeys. It would be, it, it will be difficult at first. But ultimately, it will improve your gaming by so much. Trust me on this. Anyway, we resume the slaughter. Just continue whacking through these guys. I am not going to go for the bonus because I'm level 1. You, you have to forgive me for this. I'm not going to go for the bonus because I'm level 1. Honestly, going for the bonus as level 1 carry and solo is just asking too much. It, maybe if for a speeder, sure, but like, not a guy like me. Anyway, because he's smashing, you can see that I siege my overlord over here. Oh, I only talked about my first uh, first control group. My second control group, I have my upgrade buildings. So at level one, it's just evolution chamber for now, where I'm where I am getting these upgrades. I actually can't get plus three. I actually have plus two attack for my hydrants right now, but I'm not getting getting plus three yet because I don't have my uh, my hive, which I should probably be getting. But again, using Kerrigan yields a bigger advantage. So I'm choosing to use Kerrigan for now. It'll be it's a bit delayed, but it's fine. Speaking of upgrades, I know a lot of players. Uh, I know a lot of one v one players get double upgrades. Speaking about that, um, I do not actually recommend double upgrades in co op in general. There are some instances, for example, Rainer, where you do want double upgrades because the attack upgrade allows you to burst down enemies faster. Whereas the armor upgrade gives you vanadium plating, which increases your health. So that is a co-op level upgrade. In co-op in general, your units are so strong that yes, the attack upgrades help them out a bit, but in general in co-op, more units is better than upgrading. There are some exceptions for the carrier. The carrier, for example, uh, gets a, like a plus eight damage buff for every attack upgrade. But in co-op in general, more units is preferable to uh, more up that That is especially true for gas-heavy commanders like Vorzun and Kerrigan because their units are expensive gas-wise and they are so good that generally more units are better than upgraded units which is why you still want to get upgrades but you want to prioritize mostly attack upgrades so that you can go with the strategy of just killing the enemies before they kill you. As I said before, Hydrolisks, hydrolisks are glass cannons. They don't specialize on being alive, so what you want to do is let Kerrigan take all the hits, while, whereas the uh, Hydrolisks focus on offense. So again, I keep whacking away at the swarm hosts, and I've cleared out this fourth. By the way, uh, I have actually not yet. Normally, you guys would want to go for this base, but. Uh, it just coincidentally happened. It just coincidentally happened that the attack wave was heading in down this direction, while I was uh, after I cleared up this part. So it ju it just was more convenient to clear this section in this game. I it just was more convenient to clear this section after the expansion. But in a normal game, if I have an ally, I would go for this other one first on the left side because that will guarantee enough parts. But be that as it may, I still went through this and then I went south to clear up the section because it's very near. And I finished off the, finishing off this last infestation pit. See, 3 kills, 7 kills, 0 kills, 2 kills, 9 kills. That, and also 9 kills. These hydras are very much paying for their, paying for their weight in gold. Or worth their weight in gold. Or paying for themselves. Yeah, I was in between saying those two things. Anyway, 
So I've, I've now decided to finally get my hive. A bit late, but better late than never. And I am trying to just... I'm just, I'm just starting more hydralisks. Just, uh... Yeah, just... Again, use, again, keep using assimilation armor when it's available. You'll get more money doing it. It doesn't have to be a big fight. But just a fight where you know you can get money off of the enemy. And every little bit helps. As if you're level 1, every little bit helps. Just use your abilities whenever you can. It'll be pretty good. It'll work out pretty well for you. So just continue getting these parts. Getting more hydro. I added just I just added a few more hydros, about six more. The five that I queued earlier have spawned. So now we can attack alongside the Belias. Alright. So you can see that the Bailings were trying to go for my hydro, but as I said earlier, you want to use Kerrigan to snipe off the splash damage units so that your your Hydrosks at the rear will have free reign to deal her damage. They're pretty good as long as they're not getting shot at. So what Kerrigan did is just she, sn she sniped these two bailings, which would have dealt a lot of pain to my Hydrosks. So I'm gonna, yeah, I just add more workers so, so it's to saturate. You can see this attack wave is heading toward this, uh, this side because I already have an expansion up. So like, I'm just gonna walk around. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight the the Mobius hybrid for now because I'm still at a very low supply. What I will do is just extend the time for a bit while I'm taking out these forces. You can see Hydra's taking down Scourge. Hydralisks taking down uh, Mutalisks. I ran back so that Kerrigan won't die. I lost the Hydra's right there. That might be my first Hydralisk loss of the game which is a bit painful but we are still mowing down the rest of the enemy. It is still very much cost efficient. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go for the bonus because it is not worth it for a level 1 Kerrigan. Especially if you're soloing. If you have an ally, you can totally go for the bonus, but I do not recommend it for soloing. Plus 3, by the way, is on the way. 12 more Hydralisks, courtesy of that middle that Amon provided. So I just walk through here. The, be the beauty of having Omega Rooms, by the way, is that you can just set up your Omega Rooms over here. The way I like building my, my grooms is right next to my hatcheries, as close as possible. If you wanna, you wanna, you wanna place the high, the omega so that they are literally, uh, there's literally no space between them and the hatcheries, and then just rally all your hatcheries to the omega room. And uh, how you use it is whenever Kerrigan pops into a place and uses mobilization wave, you pop on omega room, unload everything, and let your Hydrosks do all the work of killing the enemies before they're able to retaliate. Again, snipe off important splashes, again like High Templar, Siege Tanks, Thors, Investors, Vipers, all that stuff while Immobilization Wave is up and your Hydrosks have free reign so that it will be very feels bad man once the uh, Immobilization Wave dissipates. Let's just go through here, you can see that I activate, uh, I activate Assimilation Aura once again to get more money. I was not able to snipe these bailings quite uh, quite as well as I did last time. They did deal pretty good damage to my hydro. They got two, two of my hydras and that's... I think those two are pretty good ones. This was a 10 kill, so... Yeah, this was 9 kill, so... Yeah, my hydras have already uh, absorbed a lot of their own... Uh, I've, I've paid for a lot of their own costs, but... You see, yeah, I just... Using some similar scenario, I'm just getting more and more money. I can finance my army production even more. See, yeah, we are getting to that point where this Hydras was getting, was getting shelled at by this spine crawler, but because they have enough Hydras, we could burst down that uh, spine crawler without losing this one Hydralisk. But I noticed that, yeah, these two Hydras were rallied. I don't, I don't have my Gorms. Another benefit of my, of my Gorms is that you don't, have, you don't have these dumb rallies of Hydralisks walking into this big hybrid dominator of here. So I noticed that these two were heading over here. I just kind of burrowed them so that they won't die. I think I burrowed them. I th yeah, I think I do know since how I burrowed them so that they won't die. <laughs> but uh, ooh, uh, then I lose these two, so it's kind of even, but it doesn't matter. So you can see this this hybrid this hybrid dominator should be targeted down because it will have storm and it will kill a lot of my forces. There's a mechanical failure on the valley. Now I unburrowed the- oh, I have the- but like, I focused down so that one hybrid got a storm off and now it has one kill. 
three kills now on my Hydrolisks. That's why I want to storm. Uh, I want to uh, focus it down before it deals even more splash damage by spawning another storm. But yeah, uh, we walk in with our army. Yeah, no, I'm gonna burrow them. I continue smashing. Kerrigan's kind of low health, so I kind of pull her back a little bit. My army is down, back down to 81 supply. I was at like 115 at some point, but because of that one big hybrid, like I said, the danger with uh. Units like Marines and Hydra is that they are very susceptible to splash. I was not able to splash, or I was not able to burst down that hybrid Dominator in time. So I sustained a bunch of losses. I took out one of the Bailings, but I wasn't able to stop two. So you can see that, yes, Karagrit is indeed bad against splash. I, I could have done a better job sniping those uh, Bailings, but I was uh, paying attention somewhere else. Anyway, walk in. Here you can see that... I will try to, yeah, I try to snipe this Infestor, so that it doesn't get, yeah, you see, I, I snipe that with Kerrigan, so that the Infestor won't get a fungal off of my forces and do tremendous damage. And then I walk in with the rest of my army to fight units that have single target damage, and you can see, I just go in a few, a, a little at a time, and micro this over, overseer back a little bit, so that it doesn't die, and I'm waltzing in, I back up to 119 supply, I dare say I was I'm at I am at an even higher supply now than I was before the hybrid fight. But you can see that I was I'm out of position now. These air units kind of bypassed my defenses and was, and was straightforward as I wasn't paying attention at the time. So I gotta scramble back. So this is what I'm talking about. If you have a microbes, it's not a problem. Pop one, get in, get out here and fight. But as it, as it turns out, not having one microbes requires you to make the painful walk back to your base and try to fight this army, which is for some reason splitting up. I'm losing a few drones here and there. Four kills on that Mutalisk, which is, I would say, already cost efficient. This Hydra survives, this is pretty good. By the way, I'm also getting, yeah, I also have plus one armor. I also have plus one armor on my Hydra, which is pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, I'm drawing these out. Use Kerrigan to break down those two uh, Hydralisks or Zerglings. I think, I think this was Zerglings. Anyway, I intercept the rest of these forces. There's another guard in here shooting at my base. It's pretty, uh, it's it's over dead space, so it's kind of hard to get to, but I have to get it somehow or else it will, it will destroy my extractor. So I just run over here. So I start to set my Hydras a little bit so that more of them can shoot and it bursts down even quicker. I'm back up to 124 supply, by the way, so that's the power of macro. I, I focused on saturating my, my base early, and I made sure to use Assimilation Aura every time I can, and that allowed me to have enough money to get up to 132 supply. There you go. I walk over here, I make the foolish decision to try to attack the bonus, even though it won't really do anything, because the bonus is very chunky. Okay, I try to micro my force out of that. That is splash damage, that is very dangerous. And you can see, fighting the hybrid is very feels bad, Miss Carrie. She doesn't do quick damage at all. And I will lose quite a few hydro. I, I'm not 144 supply, but I am losing them. Make no mistake, I am losing my forces. Because, like, it is. Yeah, I, I, I like that, but like, a considerable amount of supply back. I, I, like, I think like six supply. That is very painful. Splash damage is very painful for Kerrigan. And a lot more, one more. There it is. Yeah, I make the foolish decision here to try and fight the trade, but honestly, that's just wasting my time. These hydralisks at this level do not have the rest necessary, the requisite damage output to kill off this train. I maybe should have added some zerglings, but honestly, I don't have them. Really See, I try to. Yeah, so. Check it out, my hydros, I now have enough Hydralisks to burst down two Bailings before they get to my Hydralisks, so... Yeah, the power, of my, the power of macro. Once you have enough of an army, even when the Bailings do try to come at you, even with Kerrigan not looking specifically, they can still burst it down pretty effectively the before they make contact. You can see I, I activate the Submission Aura right underneath this army, so that will allow me a lot more money by fighting these dudes. So even though I sustained losses here, the money I got 
from Assimilation Aura allowed me to get more uh, forces out of that fight. And I move back here. Then I will resume whacking a egg again. Harrigan needs to be in front. Uh, as I mentioned at the very start of this uh, of this game, Harrigan is your tank. She will absorb the forces while your army has free reign to get their kills. You can see this guy has 15 kills already. This one, Hydrus, has been very fortunate with 15 kills. The rest, well, these are new ones. The ones at the rear are relatively new. That's why they don't have a lot of kills. But this one, this dude. Where was that one? I need to find that one. This dude, 15 kills, has been very fortunate all game long. Yeah, I'm getting more. You can see I'm just skewing more and more hydralists. A lot of what makes good co uh, a good StarCraft player is good is that it's not that they click fast. There's a misconception among gamers and non-gamers like that StarCraft that good StarCraft players play fast. In reality, I've mentioned this before. Being fast only really matters in StarCraft 2 if you're a a speedrunner or B, in the top 50, or in the top, like, uh, let's say Diamond League or higher. That, that's probably the only time when being fast matters. Or let's, that, I probably even, that, maybe Grandmaster League or... The point is, a lot of the time, the, the game doesn't come down to how fast you are. That is a misconception. What sets good players apart from bad players is remembering what to do like the best players are the best not because they're fast well also because they're fast but more importantly good players set, us, set themselves apart from bad players by remembering simply remembering what to do if you keep remembering to spend your money to make uh to make forces such as hydro and getting upgrades if you remember what you need to build next if you remember what attack comes from where and from where and and at what time? That will immediately make you much a much better player than someone who has one thousand APM but has no idea what to do, because knowledge is indeed power in StarCraft. Remember that, guys. Remember that. A lot of what makes good players good is not by being fast, but I would say eighty percent of what makes good players good is just remembering what to do more frequently than the rest of the players. Is en route to its target. I keep smacking. Again, remember, snipe this fester before it fungles my forces. And then remember to attack move my army toward that. Remember to move Kerrigan back. Look, look at this! I just I just want to shout shout out those two hydras uh, at, at the at the front of this ultra. This ultra is kind of derping in front of those two hydras for a bit, and that allowed my hydras to establish a huge concave. And let's just watch how fast this, this ultra dies. It doesn't get a single hit off. This hydras has two kills and it almost died, but because of the sheer size of the army I have, again this is level one Kerrigan, but like. Just remembering to keep, build, to keep building units as fast uh, as fast as, as frequently as I did allowed me to get 154 supply, even when I was fighting this whole time. Like, go watch, go watch, go rewatch the beginning of the video. I was fighting this whole time. There were very few instances once Kerrigan spawned where I was not fighting. This guy's eight kills. What was that guy with 15 kills? He's still alive! My goodness, the Hydrus with 15 kills is still alive. What a champ. What an absolute champ. Let us keep smashing through. That infester did get a hit off, but apparently not on the one Hydralisk with 15 kills. That is probably the luckiest Hydralisk on, I think this is Yumoja? I think this might be Yumoja. That is the luckiest Hydralisk on Yumoja. But anyway, I am continuously smashing. You can see Kerrigan always needs to be in front to absorb the hits. And focus down this Ultralisk, or it does a lot of damage. 16 kills on the Tigers, by the way. 16 kills. 
And now I can, you can see, I, I now I just got my uh, my third armor upgrade, so that my house is a better at surviving. I, I, might, I might could carry it back a little because she was close to die. Just remembering what to do. That's the lesson, that's the lesson of co-op, guys. That's the lesson of StarCraft. It's not about being fast. It's mostly about remembering what to do. 17 kills on that, on that lucky Hydrus, by the way. I just want you guys to know that this lucky Hydrus has 17 kills. My goodness. And bursting down that last guardian very effectively. And by the way, now at 174 supply, and still getting more dudes. Oh, another another infestor got a big fungal up, but again, not on that lucky hydro list. My goodness, 17 kills on a hydro, a glass cannon. All because I I was macroing kind of decently, and because I have Kerrigan in front taking damage. That is really. Ooh, this I just have to be here. What a smart, lucky lad. Kerrigan, though, is on the way. As well as nine more Hydralisks. Nine, and Oathless Cavern. So, I decided at this point that um, I will need to assault this big base at the end. You can see there's a big ramp here. But the, the force, the base behind it is extremely well defended. Which is why I decided to get Oathless Cavern. Because aside from Kerrigan, I will need something else. Along my front line, of uh, along my front line, of my hydras stay alive, so that they won't all die the same unit. Try to focus down this thing. I was trying to, yeah, I didn't quite micro that well. I guess I'm not the fastest, but like, I just remembered to move this out of the way, and again, keep remembering to make more forces behind what you're doing. That's most. That's eighty percent of what you need to do. Just remember to make more forces. If you want to be the top eighty percent, just remember to make. If you want your speed to matter, you first have to uh, remember better to make more stuff, to not lose stuff, and to make workers. So I have a few more parts to go. I'm at. We passed the halfway point. The Balias is coming I'm at seven, seven. Anyway, I resume the attack here. The I see just these overseers. The I'm gonna need more again, points. again, activate assimilation aura. A lot of a lot of Kerrigan players I see don't activate assimilation aura. It is one of Kerrigan's uh, better abilities to allow her to get a large army, and. A bank once she maxes out. Always use assimilation aura when you have it available and when you're gonna engage in a big fight. Again, guys, uh, I can't stress this enough. We Just remember to make stuff. Where is that one lucky? Where is that one lucky hydro? It's back here. Still at 70 heals. Heals. Still attack. very lucky not to have been hit by one of the many fungals that my. Hydrisks have absorbed. We are smashing through this. Okay. So, I'm actually just smashing through. Have you fun? Okay. Ultras are now on the field. Let's go. Where is it? I just, it's in the middle. It's in the middle. I can see. I can see. It's right here. Eight at eighteen kills now. That one hydrus. That one hydrus is at eighteen kills now. Come back. Oh, oh, trying to die. Trying to lose Kerrigan. Okay, I have to run back here and intercept this attack wave. Well, this one, where is that one hydrus? Ah, uh, it's it's this one. It's this one in the middle of the group. Okay, that's gonna be a big target though. If you're in the middle of the group, you're much more likely to get hit by fungal or a storm. All right. So, the front line, engage, so here I kind of had a bad engagement. Ultrasks should go in front, not the rear. That is a mistake I've made. That is 100% a mistake I've made. But, that is, I, I, it, turns out, it turns out I will not pay for that mistake. In fact, the enemy will pay for it, because my Hydra's got a, got a better engage, because they, uh, yeah, they, they are further in front, so they got a better engage. 
So I maxed out by the way, now floating 3,000 uh, 3, resources, 3,200 minerals and 1,200 gas. And I am ready to assault the final base with the Belias. But I, I make an extra hatch over there just so I can get close faster. I wasn't paying attention to this one hydrant at a time. But now that I see it, 18 kills. I wonder if it'll get a Metamorph. So Metamorph, for those of you who don't know, is a rank that Zergids get when they reach 20 kills. Let us see. Okay. I wish, I really wish I had immobilization for this. But it is level 1. I don't really have... I don't really have immobilization. Maybe. Where is that one Hydrus? I don't see it. Oh, you can see I moved my, hydro I moved my hydro discs back so that the Ultras would be in front and tanking. They're doing their job now. Good. because that, That's good because this Hydrus is now in front. Uh-oh. That Ultras is getting close. Uh-oh. Oh! Is it taking hits? No, it's in front! Oh, dude! Look at look at how lucky this Hydro disc is! This Infester used a Fungal and they built this huge club and this lucky Hydro disc is just outside of that Fungal. Literally just outside of that fungal. How insane is this Hydrosk's luck? Will it run out this game? Stay tuned to find it. Oh, it's got it's getting hit. It got down to 53 health. It's down to 44 health. It's down to 22 health. It's down to 18 health. That brood lord got a shot off. Oh and it's luck finally runs out. But it gets replaced immediately by 24 Hydrolisks as vengeance for that Hydrosk's life. The wait, are there any other units with like close to that meter? I don't think so. I don't well this one actually has 16 kills already. My goodness, I've been going on about that hydrate that has 18 kills. But there was another one back here. There was another one back here. Wait, General Davis has 117 kills? Nothing compared to Kerrigan though. This guy's eleven kills, three kills, two kills, four kills. Two, four, two, seven, five, three, five, seven, one. One one seven five three seven one three seven one. It's like a dialing a number. I feel like I'm dialing a number of some sort. Body. I'd have lost it though. Nine, five. Let me find that, guys. Okay, I'm idiot. It's right here. Sixteen kills on this side. It's done thirty-five health though. So it's not that fortunate either. It is getting hit, but it does have sixteen kills. This Hydrus is not worth, it worth its weight in gold. It's worth its weight in diamonds. A 16 kill Hydrus. My goodness. Here comes the uh, hybrid. We focus it down. I try to move this guy out of the way. Oh. Okay. You can see this. Uh, this. This hatchery is immediately paying dividends. I built it right here so I can reinforce more quickly. And it's already building two units to help me reinforce. So that is why I built it right there. That is exactly why I got it for. Fighting. Just keep fighting. Ooh, can't get about to get hit by a nasty one. It didn't take a lot of hydro school there, so that's good. Okay, keep fighting. Keep fighting. We're almost done, and the Bally is almost dead. And there it is. There it is. I had, I had like 194 supply, but I could, I could very easily have maxed out. That one Hydrolisk didn't get quite as many kills. That The earlier Hydrolisk had 18 kills, so that was more effective, but that other Hydrolisk was luckier, I guess, because it got to survive after this game. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have any idea for the please leave it down in the comments. Uh, just remember the lessons of this uh, of this game. Just remember what to do. You don't need to be fast. You just need to remember what to do. And uh, have Kerrigan in front. Use Assimilation Aura. Keep making Hydrolisks. And snipe the splash damage before they destroy your entire army. And I will see you guys next time for Artanis level 1.